Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. I wanted to share really briefly uh, a note on this book that was just re released this month, actually, last week. It's called uh, Tacky's Revolt. And this is a study of a revolt which was entitled Tacky's Revolt that took place in Jamaica. But the thesis is that abolition, the abolition of slavery, what they had little to do with white abolition and this is this supports actually this this new book this new research supports the theses that i had put out there before and uh one of the mashaykh he had actually sent uh, a close friend of mine he had sent me the book and he said yo this book was just released on the 14th and this is exactly the theses that you had that the whole issue of the abolition of slavery is is really tied into a series of continuous rebellions that have been taking place over the last 500 years or so and so that's the main thrust of the thesis and one of the things that he brings to the fore you know is the deep tie into uh, the West African struggle and you know one of the things that we have to realize is that a lot of times we because of the way that we Europeanized and uh, cultural realities and even our own reality we forget that a lot of us are still in these types of struggles to right now if we look at what's going on in puerto rico this is the same thing that has been taking place for hundreds of years we're still on the same continuum you know of dealing with realities and in in, in, uh, in situations which revolve around the theme of liberation you know and so when we look at these things as, as how they manifest themselves whether it's the housing crisis or the wealth gap or you know, the whole issue of what's going on with the discussion on uh, rights and liberty and justice and, you know, in uh, retribution and accountability. All of these things revolve around these same themes. So a lot of times what happens with us, and I want to end on this note because I don't want this live to be too long at all. Uh, a lot of things that happens to us is that we fail to study ourselves and value ourselves. And I'm not saying on a basic level like people hate themselves. No, we don't we don't value ourselves enough. So a lot of times we don't realize that our own experiences are what shapes the discourse of justice, are what shapes the concepts of freedom, or what has impacted human history. You know, and when we come to realize that, you know, we will have a whole different conception of the world and reality, you know, and history. But as long as we, you know, are not in tune with our own history. And we're not in tune of how that has shaped and impacted reality itself. We will never have a place in history. Right? And this is one of the, the most problematic issues. You know, right now within the Puerto Rican struggle, as long as there's no consciousness that the people have a right to shape their history and have shaped the history and do shape the history. It's just the kindness of the people. The kindness of the people is not is not their foolishness or it's not their that they're brute. Like, you know, one of the politicians in Puerto Rico, he said that, you know, people are basically dumb. That's not what it is, is that people deep down are, are loving and kind. You know what I'm saying? And, and people take advantage of that. People take advantage of that. And so even when it comes to this type of history, like we're the ones that have shaped our freedom. We're the ones that have pushed the button or the edge of freedom to where it is, it is now. And we're the ones that will continue in that process. And so this new book. Tacky's Rebellion or Revolt by Vincent Brown. You need to get it. You know, you need to get it and you need to re-understand history. You need to focus on it. You need to understand that this is a continuous process. For us that are Muslim, this is very exciting because it, it ties it back into the work of Paul Lovejoy. Ties it into the work of Sylvian Jof. It, tie, it ties it into the work uh, of... Jo of some of the West African scholars, you know, that have been uh, have been dealing with this this type of work, and so this is very important uh, as far as uh, development. It ties us way back into, you know, uh, West African Timbuktu history, you know, and how that has impacted us, and how that spirit of 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 liberation in part came from that direction, and also, you know, one of the biggest. The, you know, I was thinking about the name of the author. It was Dr. John Hunwick. 
who who was very instrumental in bringing out a lot of the the, the points of West African scholarship. But the missing piece for a lot of us here also is not only the West African piece, it's also the indigenous piece. The indigenous piece is unfortunately for the, in the case of the Puerto Ricans, you know, there's so much debate with regard to who the indigenous people were. There's so much confusion and there's so much that, you know, recently they robbed the grave in Puerto Rico of some of the ancient re remains of our ancestors. You know, and it's not only that the artifacts are stolen. You know, there's not only that there's documents that have been, you know, for a long time, they have been suppressed. And so even the confusion on the indigeneity, so to speak, and the role that it contributed to history is, is somewhat lost. But when we look at people like Ana Kaona, or when we look at El Aguaybana, El Bravo, you know, there's definitely a different type of discourse that takes place there. And one of the ones who has been working on this deeply is Dr. Ramon Rosforel, one of the Puerto Rican sociologists. You know, he works deeply, you know, or very intimately with uh, Dr. Enrique Dussel. And they have talked about the concept, especially Enrique Dussel, the concept of the invention of the Americas. Enrique Dussel is, and, 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 and Ramon Grosforel, although Ramon, he doesn't really write much, he does a lot of lecturing. He's into uh, liberation, Islamic liberation theology. He's not even Muslim, he contributes to the process. But they're probably the only ones right now writing that do history in the most just way. It includes us in the piece of the story. It includes the world and it shows that civilization is the contribution of the peoples of the world. It's not just the European white man that is the hand and brain and heart of civilization. That is such a myth. You know, that is the problem of Eurocentricity. But I don't want to go further than that. But I do want to encourage people to, to get the book. It would be awesome if we could do a book reading on this. But it's important to understand. You know, this is the contention that I had with Dr. Jonathan Brown. That to say that, you know, to say that abolition was not in the making, that this is something that came recently. He wrote a book, Islam and Slavery. To say that there was no trajectory in Islam or that this is a hermeneutical reading. No, no, no. This is not a hermeneutical reading, brother. This is an actual reality in which people have shed their blood for my ancestors for this reality. You know, this is not an issue that slavery was abolished by the pen of the Europeans that were writing in Europe or even what was written here. No, this is something that was earned by struggle. You know, and, and in that sense, the other reading of constitutional rights, we define that stuff. We were the ones that were defining these issues. And even if we go back to the Iroquois and the Lakota and everything that took place in the Americas, you know, is something that we have to really study to understand that, you know, we are fundamentally shapers and movers of the society and of a lot of the achievements which this society has reached. So the more that we write ourselves outside of history, the more that we write ourselves out of the narrative, the more that we marginalize our own selves psychologically under the myth that we have no history or under the myth that we are nobody or we have no contribution, we do damage to ourselves. But, you know, you may want to be, you know, uh, sadomasochistic brothers, but don't do that to your children. That's not right. That's unjust. It's unjust that we do that to ourselves, but definitely do not do that to your children. It's not right that they have the, a false understanding of who they are and a false understanding of their fathers and their mothers. You know, and it's not right that you write them into a narrative in which they're marginalized from having a central role you know, in the unfolding of history. And that's why it's important for us to read these types of books to make sure that we keep these narratives alive. And, you know, people, I want to make this one remark and close out. You know, people were mad about Harriet. And I know that the movie Harriet has some issues, but I'm going to tell you that movie was very, very energizing. I took my children to go see that joint and you, you leave out of there psychologically empowered. People may say, well, they may start. No, no, because the narrative is one of empowerment. So, you know, people are so used to reading themselves, you know, in, in, in a way of disempowerment that they don't they don't uh, feel that empowerment. And that's the same thing with these types of books. 
you know, when you see this type of narrative, no, it shows people struggle. They contribute to it. And it gives you a different relationship to your ancestors. Assalamu alaikum.